Hasbro wants you to go see the Dungeons and Dragon movie coming out very soon. Are you going to do it? Here's the thing. We're a team of thieves. Well, this video is about the D&D movie, the Hasbro debacle, the Wizards of the Coast boycott, and the D&D movie that is just probably going to fall flat on its face now. I gotta say, I did a review of this movie, of the trailer, when it first came out. I like the looks of this movie, but it is now trending to boycott it. This movie is not going to probably live up to where it is. Uh, I did have my reservations on this movie, mostly because of the generation of way Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast have been storytelling. They have not been good. If you look at the lore implications of Magic the Gathering as of late, the last five, six years of Magic the Gathering lore has been abysmal to the point where people are buying their novels to read them and then returning them because they are so bad. I've never returned a novel in my life and to hear that people will actually go out and return a novel is not good. And before I get into it, do me a favor, share this video out there with everyone you know, do like, subscribe, all those good things that YouTube likes. And if you wanna help support the channel, there is links to Patreon and memberships down below please do me the favor and click one of them today. Now, I have to say, boycotts generally don't work. They don't do anything on the market cap. It, it, it usually is sold off how it's sold and presented. Um, we are seeing this with Hogwarts Legacy right now where the boycotts are being called everywhere. Well, I gotta say, I was in the dollar store earlier today and I came across Spider-Man figurines like we're talking the actual the actual one foot tall Spider-Man figurines in the dollar store uh, with the Hasbro logo on it. They looked absolutely they looked like they were something that belonged in a dollar store, and they were five dollars. Uh, dollar stores are no longer dollar stores. It it looked so bad. I I looked at it and I was like, this does not look like what I grew up with. This doesn't look like Spider-Man because it was just it, it didn't look normal it, it he like the paint was weird the the shape of it it, it just didn't look like a normal spider-man at all but i digress like spider-man aside this is the D, D movie i know i i I always want D&D &D to do well in this sense, but right now with the direction of the OGL, Wizards of the Coast, and how Hasbro has been treating the fandom and the creators, it is very tough for me to sit there and say, I'm gonna rush out and see this movie. Much like Avatar 2. I haven't gone to see Avatar 2 because I haven't had a draw to go see it. Apparently the movie's making like $2 billion now or something like that, which is, I think, ridiculous because they said the price tag for the movie was up there in the billions. And I was like, uh, yeah, okay, sure. I, for them to make money off of these movies, it's they need them to succeed. The last Dungeons & Dragons movie uh, cratered into the ground and they lost money on it. So it is surprising that they're pushing through a new one. And if you realize the person that wrote the D&D Beyond uh, statement and the new statement for the OGL 1.2 actually had some hand in the Dungeons and Dragons movie because he was the director, he was the studio director at Wizards of the Coast. So his job rides on this movie succeeding. Now from Newswire, critics of Dungeons and Dragons managed to get boycott D&D movie trending online. And this started trending on Twitter. A lot has been trending on Twitter. Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro tends to trend on Twitter almost daily. And it's every time I look at the uh, the trending tab, I have to go, okay, what did Wizards of the Coast do this time? And for some reason, sometimes it's they've spoiled a magic card. Other times it is a complete fiasco. Uh, it, this all started probably back at the Magic 30 getting out there when, when the Magic 30 was released for Four booster packs for $1,000 of cards that you cannot use legally in any sanctioned tournament. It, it's absolutely ridiculous how much money Hasbro thinks you have in your pocket. A lot of people are broke right now, so we'll have to wait to see how this movie does. A few months ago, there was serious controversy brewing in the world of Dungeons & Dragons as fans began to hear rumblings from D&D owner Wizards of the Coast itself owned by Hasbro about upcoming changes to the open game license, an expansive document that allows third-party publishers 
to use elements of Dungeons and Dragons rule books, classes, spells, and monsters, for instance, but also base gameplay rules like rolling a 20 sided die to resolve attacks or skill checks for their own content. Now, here's the thing rolling a 20 sided die, I spoke at length about this during my live stream last night of the live read of. Uh, the OGL 1.2, rolling dice is technically considered a mechanic or aka a, a invention, which would have been patent pending. And that patent would be far but over at this point. Magic the Gathering itself lost its patent in 2014. And thus the same thing would have happened with uh, Dungeons and Dragons just sooner because Magic the Gathering came out in 93. So if that's already gone, I'm sure the Dungeons and Dragons rule set is now gone. Now, a little digression there, that would have been on the original rule set for first and second edition. Third edition uses the D20 system, but that still came out in, I think, around the 95, 96 era. So they would, they probably have that patent gone. If you go in and actually look into the patent office for the Dun, for Magic the Gathering, you will see that they have the tapping and all the abilities, all the mechanics of the game uh, as part of that patent. And that is why you no longer, they, they no longer have it. It just gets to the point where an invention that comes out on the market now becomes open school. So it's very tough to say that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro can continue to push this forward. The OGL 1.2 uh, negates anything before fifth edition of D&D. And because of that, you won't be able to make anything prior to that. It will deauthorize anything that was made with that. So the, the, Deauthorization of OGL 1.0 makes it very tough and difficult to go forward with anything that Hasbro is pushing out. This is to me is like Windows when they update and stop servicing older versions, over older versions of their OS, of their operating system. So recently we have Windows 7 and Windows 8 that is being deauthorized by Windows. They are no longer going to support this, and going forward, it'll be Windows 10 and Windows 11. This is the same thing that Hasbro is trying to do, but this is a paper form. This is a book form. If you have the old school books, you can still pick it up and play it. It's not like Hasbro can come into your house and tell you, you can't play this. Now, what this, what they're trying to do is tell people that want to make adventures with the new publishing idea is that you have to play with the fifth edition going forward. You have to upgrade your operating system. And then from Game Rant, Dungeons and Dragons fans call for boycott of Honor Among Thieves movie. Fans think boycotting Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves may be the best way to get Wizards of the Coast to back down on changing the OGL, the open gaming license. Now, the best way was uh, that got their attention was everyone unsubscribing to D&D Beyond. Over 40,000 accounts unsubscribed from that service. And because they did that, that, that's a hit in the pocketbook directly to Hasbro. That was $240,000 that was taken away from them because that was at $6 a head. That is a lot of money. And that's only, I believe, for the base tier. I'm not entirely sure if there was other tiers above that. Tabletop role-playing fans are calling for a boycott of D&D with Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast currently under scrutiny for controversial actions. The success or failure of the upcoming D&D film could impact the game as well. The boycott is being called be because of Wizards of the Coast's recent decisions to change the open gaming license in one D&D. Rumors, statements, and insider leaks show Dungeons & Dragons was trying to revoke the OGL, imposing new restrictions and control over third-party creators. Yes, the other thing that they want to do is they want to ensure that their new product, their new product of one D&D that absolutely looks dreadful and horrible and is all the all the isms that you don't want in a in a open license to play games, they want it to be this something this something that you have to buy in order to play the game. The problem is, is there are so many more third-party creators out there. There, there's Paizo. There, there's Troll Frog Games. There, it's it's endless. Like there's over a thousand different creators that that have added to the D and D space in that particular order, and it's just 
there's so many other options out there now that if you want to play something that's in your head and in your imagination, the game rule set is, like I said, it's an invention all of its own and you can move along with that event invention that is now would be and should be no longer patented. That would come down to the court of law to be able to, for Hasbro having to enforce this. Yes, they have a lot of money, but will the courts actually side with this? That's where we don't know and where things go awry. Now, we've got open letters with uh, open d and There are over 70,000 signatures on that. There's a few petitions out there. There has been a large uproar. At one point, I believe there was over 10 million hours watched on this type of content. It, it's absolutely insanity how much content has been out there. And I've been trying to fill you guys in as much as I possibly can, as it is. Today, I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to get a video out. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and share it. I, I don't say that enough. Uh, only 22% of the people lately that watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel. So please, if you guys can do me a favor, my numbers are really low for this size of a channel. Uh, help me build this channel up. Without you guys subscribing, it won't do that. Um, there was a spotted on Reddit. I've seen this post going around. Uh, TLDR Hasbro really needs Honor Among Thieves to work out for them, more so than the subscriptions of D&D Beyond, and they will be forced by shareholders to stop messing with the OGL to make sure the movie has a good release. Credit to Super Fun Pop, link below, and there's a whole whole subreddit about it however almost every hasbro shareholder meeting since then has centered around wizards of the coast in the leading to the recent profit driven decisions with dungeons and dragons and magic the gathering the ogl changes have been a hot topic even outside the gaming world it's no ex exaggeration to say many eyes of the business world are on wizards of the coast right now and uh, the, like they should 72 percent of hasbro's profit right now on the market cap is from Wizards of the Coast, even though Wizards of the Coast is only 22% of their entire company. That is a giant egg. And that egg has been cracked and it's been, it's been hard boiled. It's been, the yolk has been removed. Every little bit and detail is being t taken out of Wizards of the Coast for Hasbro's gain. At this point, Wizards of the Coast should have been able to buy Hasbro, but it's the other way around where Hasbro owns Wizards of the Coast. And they just think, they just see one thing and they see short-term gains instead of long-term survivability of the brand. And that is the biggest problem and the biggest thing I see with this brand. If you don't go to the D&D uh, movie, then you don't. If you boycott it, great. If you don't boycott it, whatever. I'm, I don't care. Me personally, at this point, I said it in my live stream last night that if I could go see it, if I could sneak into the theater and not have to pay to go see it, that would probably be sending more of a, a shock saying, yeah, I went and saw it, but I didn't pay to go see it type of thing. It, it, it's more, it's more, uh, trying to do that little thing that they don't want you doing in the OGL because in the newest OGL you're not allowed to do anything uh, illegal period uh, to do with your game writing meaning you're not allowed to pickpocket as a thief you're not allowed to go around and actually be the murder hobo party that you want to be because it's got to be written out of the story and that is where I sat there and I went this OGL is not going to go over very well. There's the new survey for it, and I will be taking that on a live stream later today. And hopefully you guys tune in for that. Until next time, you guys have a great day. I'm your proud Canadian Phoenix, Cinder Shadow, signing off here. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and please, please like and subscribe to the video today.